The voice of the drum calls. It sings a song of those who came before us and those to come. A song of survival and strength. A song of participation and voice. A song that calls us together. When we come together and participate in the 2010 census, we use this tool as the voice of all our native people. Our voice, it is in our hands, 2010 census. Hello, I'm Kimberly Acosta. Welcome to the Native News Update on Friday, April 9th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day for the Associated Press and other Native news sources. A federal judge extends a deadline for Congress to approve a multi-billion dollar settlement for Native American tribes. The litigation, known as the Cobell lawsuit, was filed in 1996 in the name of Eloise Cobell, a member of the Blackfeet tribe. Cobell, along with hundreds of thousands of other American Indians, will receive part of the settlement for years of theft and mismanagement by the Department of the Interior. Congress must now approve the settlement in which the government admitted to swindling the tribes and their members out of royalties for oil, gas, grazing, and other leases. After a vote by the North Dakota State Supreme Court and a Board of Higher Education decision April 8th, the University of North Dakota will no longer be known as the Fighting Sioux. After a four-year legal battle about the school's name and mascot, the court ruled that the board had, to legal, had the legal authority to eliminate the school's nickname. Supporters say that the Fighting Sioux nickname shows pride and tradition, but the NCAA ruled that the nickname was hostile and offensive. The school will, re will retire the nickname by November 30th, 2010. The Wiat, Yurok tribes, along with the Rezagini Rancheria and Blue Lake Rancheria, recently passed a policy that prohibits commercial tobacco companies from giving away free tobacco samples on their tribal lands. The use of non-commercial tobacco for traditional and ceremonial purposes is excluded from this policy. According to Liz L Lara O'Rourke of the United Indian Health Services, American Indian youth start smoking at the youngest of ages and report more frequent tobacco use. The commercial tobacco industry has identified American Indian communities as an untapped and unprotected opportunity to maximize profits beyond the limits of state and county regulated jurisdictions. By prohibiting free tobacco sampling, the tribes are showing their commitment to the health and wellness of their people and are being responsible tribal governments. A former logger who started his own construction company has been named California's Small Business Person of the Year. Hal Hayes, the owner of Hal Hayes Construction in Riverside, will join other small business owners and entrepreneurs from across the country at the U.S. Small Business Administration's National Small Business Week event set for May 23rd through the 25th in Washington, D.C. Hayes and his wife Denise expanded company operations in 2001. With bonding secured, Hal became a8 certified through SBA as a minority small disadvantaged Native American owned business in 2002. Two men in 1930s style bull hats and tweed jackets climbed out of an antique car in the back corner of Saginaw's Pipes property in Alabaster, Alabama. They approached a couple of Native American construction workers and asked them if they wanted the chance to make history by working on the Empire State Building. The workers looked at each other and nodded. Then the director, Jason Rua, yelled cut and the camera stopped rolling. A film crew shot the pilot scenes for a new television show among the steel beams at Saginaw Pipe in Alabaster on April 7th. The scene is for a television show entitled Patches Through the Eyes of a Child, which will tell the stories of how every ethnic group in America had a part in the building of America. This episode is called Skywalkers. For Rennie Ro Roker, the show producer, the series is a chance to share the true history of our nation in an entertaining way. He said that not many people know about the impact the Mohawk tribe had on the creation of famous buildings like the Twin Towers and the Empire State Building. We might never have had any skyscrapers without Native Americans, he said. Nota Begay is making his Golf Channel on-air debut as a studio analyst during the Masters. Begay, who has four PGA Tour victories, but last year made the cut just four times in 15 starts, is interested in pursuing TV work. 
He's already the first male TV golfer analyst to appear on air in earrings. That's a testament to my commitment to the Native American culture, where many men wear earrings. I'm not just up here taking up space. I'm trying to perpetuate a positive image for Native Americans. Oklahoma's congressional delegation will introduce a resolution in the U.S. House of Representatives honoring the life of former Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Wilma Mankiller, who passed away earlier this week from pancreatic cancer. The resolution is being introduced by Congressman Dan Boren and will be introduced on April 13th. Chief Wilma Mankiller was an inspiration to Native American women both within her tribe and across the nation, said Boren. Her service to her tribe and her dedication to the advancement the role of women within it set is a strong example for young Native American women everywhere to follow. She is a legendary figure in the cultural fabric of Oklahoma. It is my honor to introduce this resolution, resolution to acknowledge her. Services are planned for April 10th at 11 a.m. at the Cherokee Nation Cultural Grounds in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. As of last week, musician Joanne Chenandoah was fortunate to get the news that Wilma loved a song she had written based on her questions to her in a book Wilma wrote, Every Day is a Good Day. She was able to hear it and told Joanne, Beautiful, thank you. Joanne said the world was blessed to have such an amazing spirit among us. She was a wonderful friend and a great inspiration. And I'd like to leave you today with Joanne's song that Wilma Mankiller loved so much. Thank you and have a grand day. After all is said and done, what will be your legacy? Will the rivers and streams and all waters flow clean? Will your footprint in the sand be the only mark you leave? After all is said and done, what will be your legacy? What will they say about us? What will they believe? In our lifetime on this earth, what did we achieve? What do you want them to say? What would you want them to do? How would you want them to feel when they think about you? What do you want them to know? How did you prepare the way you gave your best for those unborn and help clear the way? After all is said and done, what will be your legacy? Seeds of life he sowed, crops, flowers, and trees. Your child's great-grandchild will see the mark you leave. After all is said and done, what will be your legacy?